size eyes on the skies. Okay, outside right now, we're looking at temperatures from today. You can see it was a pretty chilly day behind the cold front that we had. The cold front came in earlier this morning and then we cooled off into the afternoon. Coming up, I'll tell you what our weekend is gonna look like. As I was saying earlier, Trey has your national forecast and Iowa forecast today. All that and more on this Thursday, November 21st edition of Size Eyes on the Skies starts now. Live from Studio 171 in Ames, Iowa, the Iowa State Meteorology Department team of meteorologists brings you the latest weather from around the country and out your front door. Iowa State's longest running television program and the only live weather broadcast on campus starts right now. This is Size Eyes on the Skies. Welcome back to Size Eyes. I'm now joined by Trey. So Trey, how are things around uh, weather-wise? Well, it was windy, it was cold today, definitely a lot colder this afternoon than it was this morning. Uh, are you ready for a break? Oh, for sure I am ready for a break. Unfortunately, I'm going to be a little bit busy over my Thanksgiving break, but uh, I'll definitely enjoy uh, the kind of warmer temperatures uh, this Thursday and just uh, really on Thanksgiving is the day I'm, le I'm letting myself a little loose. All right, well, I'll talk about your Thanksgiving forecast because you might want to stay inside especially once we get into the middle of next week. Let's take a look at current conditions right now across the city of Ames. This is a live look from I-35 out on US-30, I-35 at US-30 in East Ames. Currently, it is 32 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Winds are out of the northwest at 17 miles per hour. Those winds are gusty behind the front that moved through this morning, and the t feels like temperature right now is currently 21. Coming up, I'll go into more detail about what we can expect through the remainder of this week and then as we head into your Thanksgiving next week. Thanks, Trey. I'm really looking forward to that. And now it's time for tonight's weather story. On this date in 1798, a four-day storm was in progress in the northeastern United States. The storm dropped a foot of snow on New York City and New Haven. As much as three feet in Maine and New Hampshire, the snowstorm ushered in a long and severe winter. In some places, the ground remained covered with snow until all the way in the following May. And now, here's Trey with a look at what's going around the country. Well, across the country this evening, it is cold enough for snow. In some places, you can see temperatures right now are generally much colder across the central plains and the Rocky Mountains up into the north and northern plains, but warmer out of ahead of the front that's moving across the deep south and the Mississippi and Ohio Valley. Coming up, I'll go through your national forecast in case you do have travel plans for next week. Welcome back to Size Eyes. Now here's Trey with a look at what's going around the nation. Across the nation this evening, we have quite a bit of an active pattern going on across much of the nation. You can see right now we're looking at the national satellite and radar picture. We have one storm system that's currently moving through the desert southwest. That will begin to move off towards the east. You can see it's producing some rain and some snow down across portions of Arizona and to New Mexico. And then as I step out of the way here, you can see that moisture from that system is being drawn up into the plains and then into the Ohio River Valley up into the northeast. So a very active pattern is what we're dealing with right now and as we head into next week we're going to continue to see some active conditions and that will carry on into your Thanksgiving. Let's take a look now at the watches and warnings. You can see across the desert southwest that's where we have an upper level low producing rain and snow. Winter storm warnings in effect for the county shaded in pink here across Arizona and then some winter weather advisories up to the northwest and then you can see these advisories and warnings also extend back into portions of New Mexico, northwest Texas, and then into Colorado. So that's what that first system that will be coming through the next couple of days, and we'll continue to watch that system as we head into this weekend, but there's even more active weather on the way as we head into next week. Let's take a look at the temperatures right now across the nation. You can see it is very cold up to the north, 27 in Minneapolis, the same for you in Denver this evening. 34 in Billings, but you can clearly see all this cold air kind of filtering in behind and basically following the track of this storm system. Now out of the head of it, it is much warmer. You can see temperatures in the 70s down in Texas, 76 in San Antonio, 72 in Dallas, but then a little bit cooler as you head off to the northeast. Let's take a look at temperatures right now across the Midwest this evening. You can see it's currently 34 in Des Moines, 
of Sioux Falls sitting at the cold spot right now at 25, 23 and Rapid City and then as we move up to the northeast you can see generally uh, pretty pleasant conditions this evening not too cold and you can see that warmer air beginning to come in from the Ohio River Valley that will continue to spread northeast ahead of this weekend system and then as we look at the south and southeast as usual uh, as you would expect generally much warmer you can see the warm spot right now currently sitting at 75 in Houston and at 73 in Miami Florida and you can see 50s and 60s scattered throughout the region and then as we head to the desert southwest, you can see much colder conditions across the higher elevations. You can see Flagstaff right now at 31 degrees. They are seeing actually measurable snowfall this evening. Even cool down in Phoenix this evening with the additional clouds and rain. And you can see temperatures generally in the 60s once you get out in the coastal California. And then up, to, up into the Pacific Northwest, colder again in the interior and then a little bit warmer and milder as you head closer to the coast. So let's watch here the upper atmosphere. Here's that system that one that we were talking about earlier. It's going to move to the east and to the central plains. Now notice here it does begin to lose some of its intensity. We're not looking at as tight as a, a pressure gradient with this system and so really not going to expect too much more other than some showers and storms. You can see warmer out of the head of this but then we're going to continue to watch this upper level low continue to push off towards the east and here's a look at what you can expect with that in terms of the clouds and rainfall. You can see all that snow and all that heavy rain back into the desert southwest that will begin to push off towards the east and you can see heavy rain from portions of Texas back into the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys mountain snow and portions of the Rockies and then that will continue to push through the plains and then generally dry though if you're up across the northern half of the U.S. so really no major concerns there if you have any weekend travel plans and you can see that rain continues down to the south and east spreading through the Mississippi River Valley and into the deep south and then as we head through the weekend and to uh, Saturday morning you can see still looking at that heavy rain across portions of Tennessee and Alabama and that system continues to work its way off towards the east now behind it uh, things will begin to clear out high pressure will begin to filter in and really no problems are expected but look up here to the northwest we have more activity that's coming in from the north pacific that will move and transpire into thanksgiving week here's a look at your extended forecast now for atlanta georgia over the next several days you can see that rain will arrive there as we head into saturday mainly saturday midday through afternoon and then temperatures will get a little bit cooler behind that front in the 50s and then we'll slowly moderate as we head into next week 63 right now is your forecast for thanksgiving day thanks so much trey for that forecast now let's take a look at our tonight's trivia question what was the fastest wind gust recorded in Iowa? Was it A, 113 miles per hour, B, 123 miles per hour, C, 126 miles per hour, or D, 138 miles per hour? We'll have your answer coming right up. Now let's go back to Trey for a look at what's going on in Iowa. Now, thankfully, we don't have those type of wind speeds recorded in the forecast over the next several days, but it is pretty breezy out there right now. Also pretty chilly as well. It's currently 32 in Ames. You can see 29 in Spencer, 28 in Sioux City. So colder air is filtering in behind the cold front. I'll show you how low we'll go coming up in the full forecast. All right, welcome back to the forecast here across central Iowa this evening. You can see it is fairly chilly, fairly, fairly cold behind the cold front that came through this morning. You can see right now temperatures are generally falling into the 20s and 30s. It will get much colder as we head into tonight. And you can see a little bit warmer down across the southeastern portion of the state. Burlington right now sitting at 39. It's 32 in Ames, 34 in Des Moines. So let's take a look now and take a look and see what we have coming up here. The current conditions here, this is Ames again, currently sitting at 32 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. The winds are still out of the northwest at 17 miles per hour. So with that, that allows our feels like our wind chill temperature to be down around 21. Pressure right now at 30.13 inches and rising. So higher pr high pressure is moving in and that generally means we will have some better conditions coming in the short term. High temperatures today now, you see all this blue on the map now, that might appear as cold, but really we were much warmer earlier this morning before the front came through. That front came through about 4 to 5 a.m. and our high temperatures you can see were in the 50s. This was very early this morning. Carol even made it up to 61 today, so that was while many people were sleeping and what you're experiencing right now though is much colder conditions. You can see temperatures right now generally falling into the 20s and 30s. You can see those gusty northwest winds generally right now at about 15 to 20 miles per hour, a little bit gustier as you head up to the north. 
As we take a look at the wind chill future cast for the overnight hours, you can see with those gusty north winds, we're going to allow our wind chills to really begin to fall overnight tonight into the teens. So nothing totally outrageous as we head into Friday morning, but definitely a shocker to the system. And then as we take a look at the satellite radar picture, we've been sopped in all the clouds through much of a day with a lot of moisture trapped behind that front. You can see some high level clouds streaming in from the southwest, but we're slowly but surely starting to see things clear up up to the north and west and with those clearing skies overnight tonight that will allow temperatures to really take a dive you can see we'll I'll we'll show you how low we'll go in just a moment. So you can see here's a look at that system we were looking at across the desert southwest. That will pretty much stay to the south of Iowa through the next several days. So we may see a few clouds from it on Saturday, but in terms of precipitation, really not expecting too much more out of that. Now, as we head into this weekend, though, and early next week, I'm going to be watching the areas up across the Gulf of Alaska and Northern Pacific. You can see there's a lot of activity going on right now. Several systems will be coming, there, coming our way over the next several days and into next week. And so as you make plans to travel on Thanksgiving, we're going to have to watch these very carefully. Again, it's too early to get into details on that, but some of that could mean some measurable snowfall for portions of the Midwest, even portions of Iowa as we head into next week. So here's a look at the future cast in terms of wind speeds for overnight tonight. You can see those clouds will be clearing. Our winds will begin to settle down and that will allow for a very hard freeze in the morning. You can see winds generally out of the northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then as we head into the day tomorrow, those winds will begin to shift back out of the southwest as that high pressure system begins to move off to the east. You can see we're still remaining fairly clear, so a very nice Friday is in store. And then as we head into Saturday, kind of a west-southwest wind, a few high thin clouds, but the game day forecast does look fairly decent, and you can see we'll continue to have those pretty nice conditions, clear skies with a breezy west wind as we head into Saturday afternoon, generally winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then as we head into Sunday, watch what happens here. We're going to see a few clouds move through late Saturday night into Sunday morning, but then as we head into the day on Sunday, more clouds will begin to filter in and that will be ahead of all those systems that we're going to be watching as we head into next week. Here's a look at your game day forecast. Iowa State versus Kansas, 25 degrees for a 7 a.m. tailgate and then 38 for kickoff at 11 a.m. And again, looking at those clear skies. Here's a look now at the forecast for tonight. You can see 22 for below. Those skies will be clearing winds out of the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then as we head into Friday, it will begin to moderate a little bit during the day. Partly cloudy, 42 under mostly sunny skies. And then here's a look at the extended forecast for the Ames area and Iowa State University. You can see we will begin to warm up a little bit on Saturday under partly cloudy skies, mostly cloudy on Sunday. And then one of those systems will arrive on Tuesday with a chance for rain and snow. And then we'll continue to remain cool and dry as we head into the next week. Thanks, Trey. Definitely looking forward to those temperatures this weekend. Anyways, let's take a look at, over to our uh, trivia question once again. So what do you guys think is the fastest gust ever recorded in Iowa? Is that A, 113 miles per hour, B, 123 miles per hour, C, 126 miles per hour, or D, 138 miles an hour? Well, that's kind of a tricky question there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if that wind was from a tornado or just thunderstorm gust. I would assume it was from uh, quite a big system, considering uh, 100, 120 to 130 mile an hour winds are pretty, pretty strong. Well, I'm going to go with uh, C then for the answer, my answer choice. Okay. And uh, looking at the uh, actual answer for that, it was actually B, 123 miles an hour. Although wow. I can't, uh, I have to give you some props. I mean, the answers were quite a bit close together. Um, so definitely a, a very, very uh, strong wind gust moving through at that time. I'm sure that did some damage. Oh, I'm sure it did. Well, hopefully no one will experience winds like that next week, but it does look to turn active again. Mm -hmm. We have that chance for rain and snow on Tuesday and then another system uh, after Thanksgiving. Yep, and let's hope that we win uh, our game this Saturday against right. uh, Kansas. That would be really nice. Right, we beat Texas last week, so hopefully we can pull it off again this week. Keep that wind streak going. Anyways, that concludes tonight's show. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can find every show on YouTube under our Size Eyes channel. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on Tuesday.